There were many great speakers at the Alberta-wide rally in Calgary over the weekend. The rally held in opposition of the NDP's carbon tax. One of those speakers being Michelle Sterling from Friends of Science. Michelle is the communications manager for the organization made up of a group of earth and atmospheric scientists that have been engaging in climate literature review since 2002. That research suggests that the sun is the main driver of the climate, not humans and not carbon dioxide. And of course, there are some misconceptions floating around that the general public isn't aware of. First, I asked Michelle to clarify some of those here. You breathe out carbon dioxide at 40,000 parts per million with every breath. If you're sitting alone in a room breathing away, you're not killing anyone, right? So carbon dioxide is the essence of life. It's plant food. And I'm not a scientist myself, but I've studied the issue enough to know that without carbon dioxide, we would all be dead. And in fact, presently, the levels of carbon dioxide are some of the lowest in geological history. And if you look back through geological history, you will find that there have been times with very high levels of carbon dioxide when it's been glacial and freezing. There have been times when there have been very low levels and it's been fine. It hasn't been particularly hot and it hasn't been particularly cold. There's no correlation between them. And then we talked about the 97% consensus on anthropogenic or human-induced climate change. This is one of the most used talking points of those that believe that humans contribute greatly to increasing temperatures. And here, Michelle dispels that myth. The 97% consensus is a social proof. It's a way of fooling you. First of all, no one has ever surveyed all of the scientists in the world. The surveys that have been done, and I've reviewed them quite thoroughly, show that they've been very selective in the numbers. It's called statisticulation. It's taking statistics and manipulating them for your own benefit. There's one famous one called Doran and Zimmerman. It was done in 2009. And out of a pool of 10,000 Earth scientists, they got responses from 3,146. Of those, 79 self-selected people said, oh yes, I frequently write on climate. And of those, 77 said, yes, I, they answered two opinion questions. If this is about science, it should have empirical parameters, but they answered two opinion questions. Yes, I think it is warmer than it was about 100 years ago. And the second question was, do you think humans have a significant influence? Well, these are not questions that can be asked in a scientific context. These are opinion questions. And yes, most people who are in the science community would say, well, yes, we have warmed out of the little ice age, and that's a good thing. So the 97% consensus is a joke. It's a farce. And when you uh, look at what Maggie Zimmerman, who was one of the co-authors, said herself, she said, having received all of these replies, I'm much more neutral on the topic. I had no idea that there were so many differing opinions out there. Friends of Science also does some research into financials. And I asked Michelle if she thought a carbon tax was going to change the weather and why she thought the government was implementing it here. A carbon tax will not change the weather. We just had about a thousand people here today and they were standing in a place that 10,000 years ago would have been under two miles of ice. All that ice melted, probably due to extraterrestrial features like cosmic rays, orbital patterns of the sun and the planets, but it had nothing to do with a carbon tax. If you look at the NEI investments uh, transitioning to a low carbon economy, you'll find that a very large group of institutional investors have decided that they would like to have um, more investments in their wind and solar devices and they've made lots of investments there and one way to get those into the market is to impose carbon taxes and also get rid of coal because otherwise you can't have wind and solar devices on the grid and this is recorded in the wall street journal interview in 2013 where uh, joseph deer who was then the cio of calpers the largest institutional investor in the world he said that Clean tech is an L for loser investment. And the only way to level the playing field and make it come back up is to make the alternatives more costly and to impose a bigger carbon tax. Now, there's a thing called the Carbon Disclosure Project. It's a nonprofit 
run by the Rockefellers, uh, financial advisors, I believe it is. And they ask people who uh, corporate and, and uh, city uh, authorities to submit a voluntary statement of what their carbon footprint is. Then they asked them also to tell what climate change event had happened in their neighborhood that year. Then they take all that information, they aggregate it into a report, and this report goes to 875 institutional investors. That would be like pension funds, mutual funds. These people have $100 trillion in assets and they're all hooked on renewable energy. Why? Because they're tied into the UN Principles for Responsible Investment. And the UN Principle for Responsible Investment requires signatories to invest in sustainable development. So this is skewing markets worldwide. And we see it right here in Alberta. 120 institutional investors, submission number 107 to the Alberta Climate Plan Panel. They are telling us how to run our affairs. And it's wrong. Friends of Science is a nonprofit organization that's run by a group of volunteers whose main focus is to educate the public about climate science with the opinion that the sun is the main direct and indirect driver of climate change. In doing so, they hope to encourage the public to pressure governments to host public debates on the merits of human-induced climate change. For more information, you can visit their website at www.friendsofscience.org. For the Rebel.media, I'm Holly Nicholas. Thanks so much for watching. Click the link below to sign our petition at StopTheCarbonTax.com to show the federal government that you don't support this cash grab.